So let's go ahead and create a part. It's going to be a 3D part, always with the shells. We're going to do a um, shell, not the solid, on the, the base feature. We're going to extrude it and leave the dimension as 200 as an approximate value and say continue. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit and draw something like um, something like this. And I give you the dimensions so you can go ahead and uh, do your drawings better. This is equal to 30, that's okay. This one is equal to 40, that's all right too. Are you guys doing all right? So we're doing shell, extrude, three dimensions, or 3D, 30 by 40. And then um, say done. And then let's extrude that about 100. This is what you should get. Did you get it? Don't say you didn't get it right now. You guys are supposed to follow me. Anybody there saying they don't they didn't get it? Okay. You're good? All right. So let's give it a material. This is going to be uh, my classic steel representation of elastic properties, which are, these are in inches, so we're going to say 30 e to the 6, and Poisson's ratio of 0.29. Thirty e to the six and 0.29 for Poisson's ratio. Now you have to give it the section properties. Remember, you have two sections. One is for the flanges. Uh, the other one, because you cut the web in half, you have to give it a different cross section. So we're going to call that flange section. And uh, instead of the solid, we're going to pick shell. Type is still homogeneous. And we're going to say continue. And shell thickness, give it the value of, um, let's say for the flange, we're going to give it the value of uh, 0.1 inches. We're going to create another one. I double click on the sections again. We're going to call this one web section. And the value is uh, point, uh, zero 0.05, would it be? Half of the point 0.1? We'll say OK. Now we need to assign the sections. So the icon uh, assign the section right underneath create the section icon over here. Assign the section. Pick the top. Uh, well, let's do uncheck this create set. Let's pick the top and the bottom uh, flange surfaces and assign that to the flange section and say OK. Now pick the web and say done and pick the uh, web section and say OK. What we are not doing is that we are not offsetting uh, the web or the flange from each other. Okay? Now we'll say done. So we've created the um, geometry, we've assigned the section, now we need to do the assembly. Open the assembly uh, tree and simply double click on the instances. Here, we're going to just simply use this part. Later on in the term, we will use multiple parts to create the assembly. And we'll say OK. Now, we're done with this. Double click on the steps to create a, a general 
static analysis. We call that static um, and say continue and simply say OK. <coughs> the field output, history output, at this point I'm going to leave them alone, not, not bother with them. You may get some warning um, about some things not being useful. Let's start with the boundary conditions. Okay, boundary condition number one. I'm gonna say symmetry, anti-symmetry, and cast ray. Leave that alone. We're gonna say fixed, end, and continue. We're gonna pick uh, what this edge. Hold the shift key. Pick the vertical edge and also this edge. Holding the shift key, you can pick these edges and say done and pick the last item here which is in cast rate and say OK. Now what do I need to do? I need to apply condition of symmetry to where? To this face where I've made the cut. All right, so this is what I'm going to do. Double click on the boundary condition. Symmetry, anti-symmetry, and cast ray. That's OK. That's going to say, I'm going to call this web symmetry. Continue. I've already picked the surface. That's why it didn't ask me to pick the surface. So I've picked the surface initially. In your case, you can pick the surface and say, done. You should get the dialog box. Now, do you see the coordinates here? of what we have. You have these options, X sim, Y sim, Z sim. Those are the only things you need to care about because the other ones are axisymmetric condition of symmetry. So can you tell me what do I need to um, pick? X sim, does that make sense to you? Now, just don't pick that and say, okay, I'm good. Look in the parentheses what it says it is going to do as a result of X sim. It's going to fix displacement along the X direction, which is exactly what you want to do, right? And also fix the rotation about the other two axes. That should be a clue for you. Whenever you are going to create a shell cut situation, you are going to think of what displacement I need to fix, right? To create condition of symmetry. In this case, the displacement is what? X direction. As soon as you decide on the X direction displacement, then you say rotation about the other two axes have to be fixed. So if I want to pick Y symmetry, the displacement along Y is going to be fixed, rotation about X and rotation about Z is going to be fixed. That's how you do symmetry condition irrespective of what software it is that you're using. Does that make sense? So we'll say OK to this thing. Now, of course, the rotational degrees of freedom are the double-headed blue arrows um, that you're looking at. I'm going to try to rotate this thing so you can see this a little bit better. Um, you notice the rotations that have been um, fixed. Rotation about Z, right? And rotation about Y. Now we're going to apply the load. Depending on how you're applying the load, you need to be taking precaution, right? We're applying the load over the entire upper flange, right? But we've cut it in half. So if you're given the total load, what do you need to do? You need to divide the total load by half. What am I going to do here is I'm going to do the shell edge load. Double click on the load and pick shell edge load right and say continue it asks you to pick the shell edges and I'm gonna pick simply this edge upper edge and say done okay 
you're going to say, you know, I'm not really sure what to do here. What is the unit? Simply click on that question mark, drag it on this dialog, and it should bring up a context, a sensitive help file for you to tell you. As soon as you read that, what conjures up in the memory for you? Maybe not much, but come back here under num item number five. Do you see the dimensional analysis, what it is describing? FL to the power of minus 1, which means force divided by the length is what you want it to describe. If you're defining the load as force per length, then you, need, you don't need to cut the load or shell edge load by half. Okay? So I'm going to define shell edge load and say traction in this case, I have no idea. I'm going to leave it as the normal and say magnitude is 10. Again, I don't know anything about the direction, and I'm going to say OK and see what happens. That's not precisely what I wanted, right? So what do I do? I simply double click on it, double click on the load, and instead of traction being the normal, I want a traction, make it a transverse direction, and say OK. Well, that direction is upward. I want it to go downward. One more trick of the trade is to simply change that to negative 10 and say OK and you're in business. But remember, the 10 that we're applying is actually what? 10 pounds per inch is what we're applying as far as the load is concerned. All right? So we've applied the load, we've applied the boundary condition, and the next thing we're going to do is switch the module from the load to mesh and switch the object from assembly to part and click on the bar assign element type icon drag and with the left mouse button select the whole thing and say done and hopefully shell is the default element that has been picked I'm going to uncheck the reduced integration. So finite membrane strain means that it is deforming a tiny amount membrane strain. So we'll say OK. And then we'll go to uh, assign control, assign mesh control icon. Again, drag and select the whole thing and say done. And I'm going to do structured in this case, and quad, and say OK. Everything should turn into green. Say done, and now we'll go ahead and define uh, seeding the part. Approximate size 10 is probably too coarse, but I'm going to apply and see what it looks like. It's probably too coarse. Instead, we'll make it 5, and say apply, and say OK, and then mesh the part you should get a total of 400 elements. Is that what you got? If not, then that's OK as well. Let's go ahead, be sure we haven't exhausted our uh, a welcome of the student edition. Query under Tools, Query Mesh, and Display Detailed Report, done. 441 nodes, we're good to go. We're going to save our work and then create a job. Name it something. Continue. And we're going to submit. OK, we right click and say results. And look at the deformed shape. And this is what you're going to see. And of course, if you superimpose by clicking on allow the multiple plot states and then click on the plot on the front shape this is what you one thing you will see in a typical post processing of the shell elements or plate elements is a little description s negative versus s positive what does that mean 
Remember, your shell or plate has a thickness associated with that. Although you haven't given it the thickness per se, you modeled it as what? Wireframe representation extruded, right? But you assigned it the thickness. What happens in the computational sense, the program assigns half of the thickness above where you drew, half of the thickness below. So the model that you see gives you the result of the stresses in the below the surface and above the surface. Or you can request the result at the center line. S negative means in one of the faces where we call the negative. What do you mean by negative? If you tell the program to draw the normal to the surfaces, that would be the positive direction. The other direction of the normal to the surfaces would be the negative direction. You can go under section points. I beg your pardon. Did you do that? Result section points? Do you see what the first one is? Active location. It is set for what? Bottom. Now switch it to the top and say apply and notice the values have changed. Or the top, you need to go query the other one. Make sure you have not missed the result on the other side. Or sometimes one of the uh, situations can be compressive, the other one tensile. Here I'm not seeing that because when I go to top and the bottom, I'm seeing both positive. Why? Von Mises is always going to be positive component of the stress. How do I get the bending stress? Good. S11 is usually a good one. Now this is the top one. Look at when I go to the bottom. What do I get? Something completely different. Why? Because now I'm looking at bending stress actually top and the bottom are vastly different and the deformations clearly are going to be um, I guess in this case u2 is what I'm really interested in right the y direction 